So in the last video we were looking at non-communicable diseases and how these diseases in spite of being not communicable are spreading in the world like an epidemic. So the question was what causes these diseases? To understand that let us look at what exactly happens in some of these diseases. For example consider diabetes type 2 which is a common NCD. Diabetes is characterized by what is known as insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone secreted by our pancreas and the job of insulin is to ensure that glucose is consumed by our cells. This is because our cells are intelligent units and they don't open their doors for random strangers. Only those who have the passcode, like insulin, can access them. So although what the cells need is glucose, what they recognize and trust is insulin. Only if glucose is accompanied by insulin, the cells open their gates and accept the glucose. Now what happens in diabetes is that our cells fail to recognize our own insulin and they do not open their doors. Our cells say we don't know who you are and they remain shut. This is called insulin resistance. As a result glucose remains in the bloodstream leading to diabetes and other complications. Consider another example, hypertension which is another common NCD. Our body has a feedback system called baroreflex which maintains our blood pressure at around 120 by 80. So if the blood pressure increases due to some reason, a special nerve cell called baroreceptor will give constant signals to the nervous system until the pressure again settles down to 120 by 80. But what happens in hypertension is that the baroreceptors forget what the normal pressure is. They reset themselves to a higher value, say 140 by 90. Now they think that 140 by 90 is the normal BP and therefore the body becomes hypertensive. Consider a third example, autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis. You know that our body has an immune system to fight against invading microorganisms. But what happens in autoimmune disorders is that our immune system loses discrimination and starts attacking our own cells. In case of rheumatoid arthritis, they attack the bone tissue at the joints. Now we looked at three examples and these three are very different kinds of diseases. But you will see that there is something fundamentally same in all of them. A loss of intelligence. There is a deranged and delusional behavior at cellular level. See we take for granted the tremendous intelligence and the complexity involved in the functions of our body. Even if one small thing goes wrong, we cannot fix it from the outside using chemicals. We do not have the ability to even supplement this innate intelligence in the body, let alone replace it. That is how intricate it is. So what causes such a loss of intelligence within the system which leads to NCDs? Here the immediate evasive action that people resort to is to scapegoat the genetics and label our disease as hereditary. Because we want to somehow avoid facing the possibility that we could be responsible for our diseases. But today research has been showing that changing our lifestyle can change our gene expressions. It is true that your genetics indicate a certain tendency. But it is still up to you whether you will fuel it and make it manifest or push it back and nullify it. So the genetics argument is today outdated. Genes are not our fate and they can be altered. The second evasive action that people resort to is to blame external factors such as pollution and exposure to chemicals. Of course these factors do play a role in sabotaging the intelligence of our system. But there are other significant factors that are our own contribution to which we are usually turning a blind eye. Before telling what that is let me begin with a simple analogy. Suppose you have kept one cup of rice for cooking and after 10 minutes you realize that you need another cup of rice. Now will you put this second cup of raw rice into the same cooker? Of course you won't. But what would happen if you put the second cup of rice also into the same cooker? You will have messy rice that's all. Now why I gave this example is this is exactly what we are doing with our stomach. If you had your meal at 1 pm and if you again eat something at 2 pm you are creating a confusion in the digestive system. Now it doesn't know how to handle this mixture of partially digested food and freshly ingested food. This may not lead to any issues on day one but if we constantly abuse our stomach with such erratic eating 
it will eventually induce a fundamental imbalance in the system it will start acting crazy now this is just one small example to point out how an erratic and compulsive lifestyle can contribute uh, to an imbalance in the system and we are doing plenty of such things which abuse the body being unaware of what we eat how much we eat when we eat how we eat lack of physical activity lack of exposure to nature habits that abuse the body unhealthy sleep patterns and so on and yet these are not the first things i want to highlight in these videos there is another very significant factor which contributes to imbalance in our system our psychological state see i was referring to erratic lifestyle and obviously today the most erratic part of a human being is their mind and this chaotic energy will naturally have an impact on the body over a period of time leading to ncds if you don't believe me please know that ncds have also been labeled as psychosomatic diseases they are diseases in which the psychological turbulence has a very significant role to play in other words ncds are spreading in the world like a pandemic because humanity is getting too mental there is a saying in india yatha raja tatha praja however the king is so will be the subjects however we are so will be the cells and systems of our body if we are deranged the body will also become deranged in due course but please note that we are speaking about the overall state of affairs there may be some cases where our psychosomatic contribution to the ncds is minimal someone living a very peaceful life may also succumb to an ncd sometimes such things happen but what we are pointing out is that largely the incidences of ncd today are psychosomatic in nature we will explore the psychosomatic nature of the ncds in the next video